Morning. Excuse me. Yes, madam? I just wanted to say I was sorry about what happened to you. Thank you. Local, eh? Sharrett. Uh, I'm uh, PC Ron Swallet, your home beat officer. Pleased to meet you. I'm Mrs. Sims. I've probably seen you around. I don't know if you've had one of our leaflets, so I'll give you my card. Hopefully we'll be able to launch the community police office quite soon. I think my daughter, she might know him. Now, don't you worry. I don't want I'm getting into trouble. Huh? Hello, Anne. You bitch. Oh, now, come on, your mum's you only... You lie, Cal. Now, listen. Get off me, you pig. Oh, you calm down. This is the man who was nearly killed. I don't want you living with a murderer. He's not a murderer. Hang on, can I speak to her? You've caused enough trouble, you have. You've grasped everyone up. Anne. No, he wants to pretend he's all nice so we can turn everyone in. That's his job to catch the people. Spy on us. Oi, oi, no, who told you that? Her boyfriend. That's a lie. Everyone knows it. What's his name? He's got nothing to do with Colin it. Colin Sykes. She's got an address book. It's in her room. No! Look! I'm a prison! What are you doing out of bed? Things I shouldn't be doing in bed. You terrified the life out of me. Oh, no, I didn't. When you're really terrified, you know. Here. Thank you. I want to look glamorous on my birthday. Of course. I've not forgotten. Happy birthday, Mum. Thank you. I'll bring your breakfast up. No. I'm coming down for my breakfast this morning. You'll never manage the stairs. Yes, I will. With a little bit of help. Come on, then. I think there's one in here, love. Happy birthday, Gran. Oh, thanks, Mike. They're lovely. Come on, Mum. Yeah, oh, well, where's my cake? Well, for breakfast. That's right. <laughs> All people are supposed to be hot. Not right, Mike. Absolutely. There you go. Seven candles, one for every ten years. Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Gran. Happy birthday to you. Put them out, Gran. Deep breath. Go. Gran. Is she all right? She will be. Get her tablets, Paul. Yeah, right. It's all right, Mum. Come in. Thank you. You wanted to see me? Yes. I'd like to know exactly what was done for my mother before she died. We uh, made her comfortable. What does that mean? She had a stroke, as you know, of course. And under the terms of her living will, we weren't allowed to do anything else for her. You mean she could have had treatment? It was possible, yes. In your mother's case, we were legally prevented from offering any form of surgery, medication or therapy. You left her to die? I acted under instructions. That's an excuse that's generations old. Now look here, What I was... if she hadn't have obliged so conveniently? What if she'd shown signs of hanging on a bit? Would you have given her a push? In some hospitals, they hurry things along a bit by withholding food or water. But here, we pride ourselves on our... I don't believe this. How can you dismiss a life so easily? We didn't. Your mother signed a living will. Quite simply, we acted upon it. Could she have benefited from treatment? Could she? Look, it doesn't serve any purpose. My God. You tossed her life away. No, we acted under yes. the terms. Yes, I know. What do you say? Julie! Watcher. Hello, John. Uh, Eddie did tell you about this, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. Come here. He looked good, John. Yeah, so are you, kid. <laughs> Look, I can stay around if you want. 
Me and Eddie aren't that close anymore. Well, that's a big temptation. You look like you could use a bit of TLC. So could I, to be honest. No, the thing is, uh... Well... I didn't realise. Yeah, here he is. You remember Tim, don't you? Champ. Say hello to Kath. All right, hello, Tim. You've grown up. Well, I should say. Nearly 12 now, aren't you? Nearly 13. Oh, dear, don't they make you feel old, eh? <laughs> well, look, i better get off. Leave you to it. Let you settle in. Make yourself at home. And if there's anything you want, give me a ring. My mum's number's by the phone. Yeah, that's smashing. Thanks a lot. Go on, you go and have a look round, will you? You all right? Here you go. Like I said, if there's anything you want, give me a ring. Yeah, cheers, Gaff. It'd be a different story if it was the computer that had gone wrong. But because it's the car, he thinks he's got a point to prove to me. <laughs> At least he has got a point to prove. It's more than Elwin's got. What do you mean? Well, he's just got no enthusiasm for anything. Comes home from work, flops in the chair, and then he's down to the pub. Same in our house. The only time we speak is when John gives me orders. Ellen? See what I mean? What? Would you have a look at Elwin's car, please? Mike's looking well, isn't he? It's electronic ignition. That's what he said. He doesn't know anything about it. He doesn't know anything about it. What are we going to do? Put the plugs back. Yeah. Put the cap on. Yeah. And leave it to your man on Monday. What a splendid idea. I can bring up Club 403. I can have a man down here by lunchtime. He's a skilled technician. I should hate to rob a skilled man of a job. See that? Mm -hmm. Five years it took me to learn dentistry. No computer's ever going to replace that, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. What? I should wash that before you put it in someone's mouth. How are you getting on, you two? Well, listen, Mike's just wrong to say he's not going to make it to the theatre. Oh, why? Oh, he's got involved with Anna, so he's going to stay down there. But listen, if we want to get there, I think we'd better leave soon. Well, that's all right. Tell John I've fixed it. OK. To the call. Yeah, yeah, save it, you darling. I like your outfit, by the way. Do you mind? Give us a couple of seconds, will you? No, I'm afraid you. <laughs> 